welcome Omar Baldonado. Hello and good morning. I'm excited to be here. This is my, I think I've been here with the OCP community for about five years now, and I've been part of Facebook team for about five years as well, and it's amazing to see how this has just grown. So to start off the talk today, I wanted to cover a question that I get from the OCP community as well as from within Facebook. And the question is, why does Facebook participate within OCP? It sounds sort of a simple question, right? So there are a couple of easy answers to this, right? The first one is, hey, well, Facebook helped start along with a number of other companies, face, uh, the OCP project seven years ago, and so that's, that's why we're here, right? That doesn't answer why we continue to be here and be such a part and feel so invested with this ecosystem. Another easy answer is that Facebook is, uh, has open source in its DNA, right? We've built Facebook based on open source software, and now we want to bring and continue to leverage the open source community in the hardware space. That's true too. That's Facebook, and that's part of why uh, we started the OCP community with a, a number of other companies. But the real reason, kind of one of the primary reasons why we are still here today, and what, the theme of our talk is that fundamentally we want to move fast. We want to move fast, we want to innovate, and we believe the best way to do that is with this community, with all of you and the companies that you represent. So to give some context as to why we need to move fast, I'm just going to go briefly over a little bit about the problems that we face, right? Or they're good problems to have, right? So we have um, billions of people using our applications. The numbers are big, right? But when you kind of take it down and think about what everyone is doing with our applications, they're posting videos, they're posting photos, they're watching videos, they're engaging in group chats, uh, text chats, video chats, all over uh, the world with, this in, with these applications. And as you've seen some of the previous speakers today already, that's only part of the story, right? The applications, the, the traffic, this is a, a bandwidth graph, the traffic from Facebook to the internet uh, has been growing, but it's actually dwarfed by the traffic internal to the Facebook infrastructure. So what have we been doing um, to support all of this scale over the past several years? We have a history of working with the community, contributing uh, server, storage, and networking designs, uh, as well as rack, data center, and power designs to the OCP community and working with all of you to generate those solutions. But going forward, you see the question mark with 2018. What do we have ahead of us? Right? What's clear is that what we've been doing so far, even though we've been working on all these different aspects you've heard this morning already, uh, scaling out servers, scaling out storage, scaling out networking. What we've done so far is not enough for going forward. And I'm going to delve into a little bit into uh, an area near and dear to me, the network, to give you a sense of how we at Facebook tackle uh, the scaling of infrastructure and the building of our infrastructure. So you can think of it in, ter in terms of three pillars. The first, we partner for solutions. That's where it all starts. Even though Facebook develops, and it sounds like you know, Facebook solution, it's all done in partnership. We, we, nothing we deploy is done alone. We partner. Right? Then what we do is we take that and we scale it out, and we deploy that around the world in in, across our infrastructure. And then when those solutions start to hit scaling limits, when we're realizing, hey, we're, we're, really, we're not really getting all that we need to get out, we go to the third pillar of innovation. Right? So let's delve into each of these. Partnership. To understand this a little bit, partnership is about people. So, and what we have inside Facebook is we have network engineers, software engineers, and hardware engineers, all working together to deliver the network infrastructure. Now you can take this partnership, and this triangle, and apply it outside Facebook boundaries to the whole community that's here today. We have networking companies, software, both hardware and software companies represented here. Within OCP, we've had a number of different hardware uh, partners with us uh, throughout the years. For example, EdgeCore makes our Wedge and Wedge 100 switches. They've been an excellent partner for us as well as for OCP for the last several years. Thinking about network, EdgeCore um, four years ago had the first 10 gig switch accepted by the networking project. 
Fast forward today, four years, they've now submitted a 400 gig switch. So over just four years, we've seen a 40x increase in the speeds and feeds that we're talking about with this partner. Celestica is another partner within the community who makes our backpack switch. So from a partnership perspective, I want to go over a few partnerships to, to highlight them, specifically in the hardware and, the, and in, in the software space. The first one that I'm excited to announce is that Arista has made their Arista EOS software available on top of the Facebook submitted OCP accepted Wedge 100 switch. Right? This is a complete validation uh, of the disaggregation principles that we've been talking about within the community for the last several years. You can choose uh, the hardware that you want, in this case from Edge Core. Uh, you can choose uh, OCP switches, and you can choose software that uh, you want. In this case, it's proven familiar, uh, widely deployed software from Arista, and this is available uh, uh, now. So please help me thank, actually, Edge Core uh, and Arista to make this, uh, uh, this partnership happen. This is a, a great uh, this example of disaggregation for the community. The next example is one uh, that's dealing with uh, another Facebook uh, uh, submitted switch, but this time with Celestica as the hardware and Cumulus as the software provider. Cumulus also has been a very longstanding partner and contributor uh, and driver within the OCP community. Cumulus and, uh, provides their software on top of Backpack, and tomorrow at one of the engineering workshops, you can hear from uh, one of our colleagues from Yahoo Japan Corporation, Kenya, and he'll go over the design of their OCP data centers, the networking requirements that they had, and then why they've chosen Backpack and Cumulus as their solution going forward uh, within their data centers. So again, help me thank you. In this case, we've got Backpack, uh, with Celestica, Cumulus, and Yahoo Japan as a partnership that we wanted to highlight. So those are two commercial software partnerships, uh, partnerships with commercial software on top of OCP switches. This last one you got a preview of uh, when Facebook, Google, and Big Switch got up to talk about uh, Open Network Linux. In this case, we have again the Wedge uh, 40 and Wedge 100 switches. And the software package, there's an open source software package that Big Switch is pulling together and will support uh, and push out there, which brings together a number of open source packages across the community and makes them available on OCP switches easily. There's going to be an, a workshop tomorrow uh, that the folks referenced already, which is going to go into details about how Open Network Linux is used to load all these different software packages. And we'll highlight, actually, the open source software that's on top. Just to drill in a, a little bit, uh, you've got hardware on the bottom, reinforcing this concept of disaggregation. You have software projects within OCP, such as ONI and ONL. We have a couple of other software projects that in the open source, FBOSS and OpenR, and then FRR um, as another project that you've heard about today. This is just a snapshot of some of the software that's available. Uh, last year, we actually announced that ONI um, also supports uh, Psy and Sonic on top of wedges. So what we've got here is a, a really vibrant community, a vibrant uh, offering of open source software uh, for people in the audience to um, experiment with, develop on. Um, and so that's, we're excited to announce that today. So that's the, those are the partnerships. So we partner to develop solutions. Now, how do we scale um, uh, those solutions out in our deployment? First, as we scale, we've clearly been keeping track of all of the speeds and feeds. Right? Andy just gave a, a great talk about hey, the, the progression along the optics side. Uh, I referenced Edge Core, the progression on the chip side. And we continue in the networking uh, group it's, uh, to follow all of those uh, innovations and in speed, from our 40 gig switches that we initially contributed to our 100 gig switches and looking beyond. All of these switches are deployed into production into our fabric. We've talked about this for the last several years. Uh, and we continue to innovate in those fabric designs. This fabric design has been around for several years, and we continue to push to see, is this going to support us going forward? Is this a topology? How do we need to change this for it to scale going forward? 
And speaking of data centers, the, the way we scale out, we've, we have 12 announced regions, Facebook has, um, expanding across the world. And in fact, that, that acceleration, we announced one of our first data centers kind of around the starting of OCP, the Primal data center. Um, but that pace has been accelerating. The last three data centers you see up there were announced, or data center regions, were announced in the last three mo uh, six months. Uh, we announced those. So the pace, the scale of even our data center footprint is growing rapidly. All of this is in support of the global footprint of people using Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram and Messenger all around the world. So that's partnership. We build solutions, scale, we push them out and start to learn how to use them and deploy them operationally. But sometimes the, we, we often find the solutions reach scaling limits. Right? So what do we do then? We have to innovate. And so I'm excited to announce that we are, uh, we've been working on a, a particular innovation. We're going to announce it, and we're contributing it here at this OCP Summit. Uh, and to go into more details with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Sri Sankar. Thanks, Amar. Hey, folks. So I'm here to talk to you about some of the challenges that we saw in our network last year and how we went about solving it. To, oh, I would like to go back. Sorry, guys. OK. So to give you, give you a better understanding of the problem, it's important to understand how we process data in our network. There are multiple, as 2 billion users, share their experiences across our platform. There are multiple locations in the network where we process data. But the majority of the workload is handled in our data centers. For example, for like all the applications like search, AI, ML, or newsfeed requires a lot of interaction between the compute and the storage servers in the data center. This generates a lot of traffic. You might remember that slide that Omar shared with you about FB internal traffic. Pretty much all of that FB internal traffic is handled within our data center region. So that's a lot of traffic. So let's zoom into a region. There are multiple buildings in a region. And each building has several network fabrics. And these network fabrics interconnect all the compute and the storage parts in our data center. And these network fabrics need to talk to each other. And they do that through this layer called fabric aggregation layer. And the fabric aggregation layer con comprises of several aggregation nodes. And each aggregation node is typically a network chassis switch. And we end up using one of the largest switches that is available in the market. So there are two main functions of a fabric aggregation layer. The first one is it interconnects all the buildings in a region. This is what we call the east-west traffic. The second big application is it aggregates the traffic that leaves the region or enters the region. Right? We call that the north-south traffic. Right? So it handles a lot of data. That's the point that we are getting to. And uh, we were growing tremendously last year. Like each region, we started off with one to two buildings, and we were moving to about six or more, more than six buildings. So what it meant was there was a tremendous increase in the east-west traffic. And uh, there, was a, there was a lot of pressure on this tier. Simultaneously, all the immersive uh, experiences that we provided on our platforms generated a lot more traffic on the north-south direction as well. Again, there was, this uh, needed a big change in this aggregation tier. So we had to do something. We were already using the largest switch out there, and there was nothing that we could buy readily. Uh, to solve this problem. So we had to innovate. So what did we do? Well, some of the design considerations for uh, this building block was, like I said, we used the largest building, uh, largest chassis that was available. Uh, that is about 512 to 576 ports of 100 gig. And we needed at least 3x more capacity than that. The next big factor is power. Power is a sparse commodity in data centers. And a uh, linear scale of power with respect to capacity was something that our data center environment did not tolerate. So we needed a more power efficient solution for the capacity that we needed. But the key design criteria was the flexibility and the adaptability of the design. Right? 
all of our regions had a very different configuration, different number of buildings, and a different traffic profile. We needed one solution that can scale up or scale out to satisfy the needs in our data center. And we had to get all of this done with a very, within a very short duration of time to address the growth of our infrastructure. So what was the solution? I'm happy to introduce the fabric aggregator, a completely disaggregated network system with disaggregated building blocks. So how did we go about it? Right. Some, of the, some of the points to mention there are the, the, the system that you saw. Can we go back one slide, please? The current system that you see out there is roughly about 100 tera of capacity. This is one of the smallest unit that we built. And the entire tier of fabric aggregation layer uh, handles about 2.5 petabytes of traffic. Uh, to give you some perspective, that is about 2.5 billion images that can be processed simultaneously by this tier. So it's much larger system than what's available out there. So how did we go about building it? We kept it simple. We took the existing building blocks that was already deployed in our network, the Wedge 100S, and stacked them up and cabled them together and ran FBOS on it, and there's our solution. You might be wondering, oh, that's fairly simple, right? So where's the innovation here? So we innovated across four design elements. So first is the architecture. Again, that's one of the inherent, the distributed architecture really gave us a big advantage here. We kind of understood the traffic pattern very well, and we were able to customize the solution to uh, efficiently use the ch uh, chip ASIC in, in the switches. The second part that we had to solve was the cable assembly, right? With a cable backplane, one of the biggest challenges that we had to solve was the serviceability. So we came up with some innovative uh, options over there. And uh, I'll go into a little bit of detail in the next slide. Right? The, the other two aspects are software scaling and operational aspects. I'm not going to dive in deep into these, but I would strongly encourage that you attend the engineering workshops that are scheduled for tomorrow. So let's take a sneak peek at the cable backplane options. Uh, like I said, serviceability was a key element with the cable backplane solution. So there were, we came up with different options based on the deployment scenarios be it a single rack solution that could meet a smaller data center region, and uh, it may be more applicable to an enterprise or a large uh, uh, service provider environment. This is a single rack solution. So the first option that we have is the pigtail AOC optics with a side, uh, with a side plane option. Then for a hyperscale data center like ours, we needed a multi-rack solution, a solution that can scale multiple racks. Right? So we came up with this very cool design with what's called the flex plane option, which is a printed back plane on the shuffle box. And, um, with, and the optics that we used there were either CWDM4 or PSM4. The third option, which is cost and power optimized, there is always the direct attach cable on a copper back plane. So and I'm, I'm super excited to announce that we are, uh, we are contributing all of these four options to the OCP community, and I hope you can take advantage of the design that we have on our research. So we went over the solution, and I want to walk you through some of the advantages of this distributed approach that we took. Right? The first and foremost is the operational efficiency it provides. Right? Typically, in a, in a network infrastructure, for every tier in the network, we build a customized chassis right, for that capacity need. Right? In this case, we ended up reusing a building block and scaling up uh, to meet the needs of each tier. It reduced the number of SKUs in our network and thus providing a, a huge operational efficiency. The second point is about power and design efficiency. Right? We customize the design or the architecture to directly map to the traffic profile in the region. And we were able to adapt that based on re each and every region's needs. Right? This helped us take a complete advantage of the ASIC's capacity. Right? More 
more uh, power density with less number of ASICs. So we, we, we minimized the overall number of ASICs that was needed to build such a large system like this. And that in turn also provided us power efficiency. Some of the inherent property of a distributed architecture is smaller fault domain. So a single switch failure um, doesn't impact the overall throughput of the system. Again, we were able to do all of this within a very short period of time as we were using the existing building blocks and assembling a solution together. Right? From ideation to production, we were able to move very fast and get there in five months. Right? And, and we have deployed this in our data center regions over the past nine months already. The last and the big advantage that this design provides is the flexibility and the adaptability. Right? We can scale up or scale out with the building blocks, and you can swap the building blocks to address the different needs in your tier. We started off with like designing for a four building scenario, but we could just scale up with the wedge 100s to support a six building scenario. Right? And also, in, in case of a, where the buildings were remote, you can even swap the building block from a wedge 100 to a more optical, a long haul optical solution. So this uh, gives us a lot of flexibility. And to summarize, uh, this approach redefines the way we add uh, network capacity in our data centers. And I hope you can leverage this design and address different use cases in your network as well. So what next? Today we are on a 100 gig solution. We're using Wedge 100, uh, 100 as a building block and pluggable optics. Right? We are already uh, stretching the power limits with our scale. And it's unsustainable for a 400 gig data center. So we strongly believe co-packaging the optics with the ASIC might be the way to go for the next generation. Right? And we urge this community to innovate with us so we can move faster into our next generation. With that said, I would like to call Omar back onto the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. Thanks, Sri. And so thanks to Sri, and thanks to actually, there's a whole large team inside Facebook, again, network software and hardware engineers, as well as a number of uh, companies here who partnered with us to develop uh, the fabric aggregator. So what do we have going forward? Right. Um, there are a lot of challenges ahead, right? Uh, Shri gave us a taste of looking ahead on the optics side, right? And this was actually a theme that uh, we heard also from Andy earlier too, which is how can we develop solutions that are going to allow us to have the same signal integrity but with higher density and lower power? Because power is one of the, is the dominant factor within our data center designs. Um, Co-packaged optics is a solution uh, that we strongly believe in, but we also see a lot of, a lot of the whole community working on uh, different solutions. If we take that and step back, co-packaged optics is just one example, right, where we're working really, we as a community are working at the cutting edge of what is, what is available. Um, at the lowest level, the optics side is in the, the nanometer realm with photons and electrons and physics. Um, if we now look also at other parts of our solution where we have component materials to worry about, the supply chain, we are now looking at demands that pretty readily exceed uh, the supply of many of our, our raw materials that we use in our solutions. How are we going to solve that? You know, we as a community need to tackle that. You heard earlier also from Bill and others about uh, the need for better control, better protocols, firmware layer. Um, for the purposes not only of uh, performance, but also of security. A lot of innovation has to happen there too. And the example that we gave here with Fabric Aggregator comes to the idea of system fabrics. How do we put all these technologies together into new innovative topologies uh, like Fabric Aggregator you just saw, but it's going to be within other uh, realms, not just network, where we have to come up with these new fabrics. So that's our call. Our call here today is this group, and you've heard it not just from our keynote, but from other ones this morning as well. This is the group that will make the next generation of network transceivers, the next generation of chips and storage, 
the next generation of firmware for better security as well as performance, and new topologies to put it all together. We're all going to do that together as a partnership, network, software, and hardware. Right? And hopefully, you get a sense that this journey, our journey, is only 1% finished. So thank you very much. <laughs>